This is the big one. So, if you suspect a TFCC injury, an ulnar sided injury, what's going to happen is the athlete will be complaining to you about ulnar sided wrist pain. So now what we're going to do is we want to create an unload, but I am going to cut it now into thirds. We're working into the wrist now. It's a smaller joint. You don't need those big halves here of your unload. So I'm going to do it in thirds. Okay, so we cut a third, a third. and then I join them back up. Okay, cut what I think is going to be the right size. What I typically see with new tapers is you guys um, cut these way too short and then you struggle with creating the unload. The other thing you're going to need is a piece of white coverall. I cut it right off the box. I only took about six boxes worth because the wrist is not big, okay? The TFCC is such a small area to unload. You don't need a massive piece of coverall. The other thing you're going to need is a gutter. So we're going to use our foam padding again. Take a strip off of your foam padding, measure it to inside your coverall and that's the size that you need. And then do the second one. And here are our gutters. You're gonna see how we're gonna use these. And then I think I am ready to go. So again, if she's going into play, I would have sprayed the wrist. What you're going to do is lay down <coughs> your coverall. This is your anchor, okay? So make sure that you don't get onto the hand, but you get just enough onto the wrist. Athletes can be really picky that they don't want anything intruding their hand motion here. Okay, just like the knee or the elbow. We don't want to block anything. So then from here, she's going to hold like this. Because the whole point of this tape, if she's got ulnar sided pain, what she's telling me is when she goes like this, she hurts here. So what are we going to do? Go the other way. We're going to block her. We're not going to let her get there, right? So we're going to block it. So we're going to unload it and we're going to block it. So we're going to take our gutters. Now the TFCC is where? Right inside that fovea, right? Right here. So I'm going to make sure I've got a gutter on one side and I've got a gutter on the other side. Now the other side is her styloid. <coughs> if she also had pain with extension, that might be ECU is also involved. If it is, the ECU is right around the styloid. So you have to just push your gutter out a little bit further. But if it's just her TFCC, put the gutter over the styloid so that you can see the ulnophobia. Is everybody understanding that? If the ECU is involved and we've got extension and ulnar deviation issues, we are going to do it in both spots. We're gonna move the gutter further around, okay? We're then, just to be technical, we need anchors usually, right? For things to connect to, our, our unload, right? But I've already got a kind of an anchor here. So you could opt to use the cover roll as an anchor, but to be very textbook with this tape, we're going to create anchors on the outsides of your gutter. This is why your strips have to be long enough because they've got to get from anchor to anchor over the gutter, okay? If you make a little baby unload, you're never gonna reach it. So then from there we start. We anchor the bottom strip, we pinch, pull, and go across and we lay it down. Okay, lay it, pinch, pull, lay it down. 
50% overlap. This is no different than any of the unloads that you have done. The only thing, it's a little smaller, okay? And it's got skinnier strips that we've cut into thirds. Pinch it, pull it, and lay it down across. So what I'm doing when I pinch this I'm pinching it kind of towards me. I'm trying to pull it off of her bone and lay it across. The gutters are there so that I don't put all the pressure onto the ECU or TFCC. The gutters are there to create a lift so that I don't just smash into her tissue, which is highly sensitive here. We want to go all the way to the top, covering that last little bit of the foam. You see that? And now we've got our unload. Now to be super, super technical, if we have an anchor, we have to recover the anchors, right? But sometimes that's a step we don't need, but we're going to use it because to be super technical, you're going to put those there, okay? You're going to re-anchor your unload of all those strips. Now, if the athlete's like, oh yeah, that's great, I don't feel anything, you're done. All you're left to do is to do a light plast wrap. But if you're really concerned that they're playing a sport like tennis where they're really cranking, or golf, where they really crank on their wrists, and you feel like, I think we need to block this a little bit more. What you're going to do is you're going to add what are called either ulnar deviation or extension blocks. Now, you might not know you need this right off the bat. The athlete might go practice and come back to you and be like, it still hurt when I extend it a little bit. If that's the case, or it still hurt when I deviated a little bit, you will add what's called a block. You'll take a half strip. You're going to have them right at the top. You're going to tell them push right into my strip, and I push back. That is going to prevent her even more from going into ulnar deviation. If she told me she needed a little more a blockage into extension, I would take my, t my strip and I would say push up as I push down, okay? And then there is your, it's just going to block her. She's not going to be able to get there. That's going to stabilize her. She's going to play with no pain in that wrist with this tape on. Once you've got your blocks, perhaps maybe she needed two blocks, one on top, one on the side. Maybe she just needed two extension blocks. It's whatever they tell you that they think that they need. If you think it's pretty severe, then put two to be safe. Fingers wide. Final wrap is your light plast wrap. Not too tight. It's just to cover it up so it makes sure everything stays in place. And then you will finish that with a piece of tape. Then, if they have a wrist brace, we say put it on, or a sweatband. Put the sweatband over this to keep it on the whole time, okay? So it's the same unload you've done the whole time, smaller, and it's got some gutters on it, okay? Which is a little different than when we did these big muscles. We didn't need the gutter. Mm-hmm. So is it okay 